Let's start with our warm-ups and just do a gentle practice today. So shoulders back and down, crown toward the ceiling, spread out your toes, make sure your ankles, knees, and hips and shoulders are lined up and just reach the crown toward the ceiling. Activate your core, get that support on your lower back and sink evenly into your feet. Reach up through the crown, back with the shoulders, relaxing them down and focus inward, letting that breath fill you completely, belly moving as you breathe out with the in-breaths and sinking in with the exhalations. And then inhaling, bring your arms to shoulder level, stretch the fingertips out. Exhale, hands to your heart, elbows back. Stretch to the front, keep your shoulders down. And then exhale the hands behind you, just clasp them gently, press them to the floor, and lift your heart. Stretch your head back, nice little upper body back bend. Spread out your toes, no gripping. And then pivot at your hips, exhale over. And just deepen as far as you'd like to go to start. Move your chin around, start releasing your neck. Lift your hips, get those sitting bones rising so the back of the legs can stretch a little more. And move your hands toward your head for that shoulder neck area. And then bend your knees slightly and keep the chin slightly in as you work your way back from the bottom of the spine up into the back bend. Lift your heart, drop your shoulders, stretch your head away, spread your toes, and breathe. And just take a few moments feeling that back bend. And then inhale upright, releasing your arms. Take a moment as you get back into your mountain pose to just notice your spine. And again, arms reaching out, hands to your chest, stretch to the front, and clasp the opposite way behind you. So shift the fingers in one position over. Lift your heart, stretch your head back, and then pivot at your hips, exhaling and coming forward. Hands up, head down, move your chin around again, everything released, tuck in your chin a little more, shoulder blades toward your waist, and just feel what that does. And then bend your knees slightly, and again, work your way slowly up through all the bones of your spine into the back bend. And again, stretching out through the top of your head, just feel that whole body lengthening from the feet all the way out through the crown. Inhale upright, release your arms, and again, just notice your spine energized and your whole body activating. Side stretches next. Let's keep one arm down today, the other arm out. Palm toward the ceiling, keep the shoulders down, bring the arm over your shoulder. Stretch away with the hands as you lean, no twist over to the side. So make sure you're not leaning forward and push the foot you're leaning away from down for that extra rib opening. Feel the whole side expanding and that sideways motion in your spine. Inhale to the top, release that arm back, and notice the difference. That's the yoga part of this. And then the other arm comes out, shoulder down, palm to the ceiling, hand above your shoulder. Push the hands away and lean to the side. And again, as you get into your position, maximize it with the foot down and the head and hand reaching opposite. And again, make sure you're not leaning to the front or the back, that's straight to the side. Take a few breaths there, opening the ribs, stretching it out. And then inhale upright and release. And again, just notice how your body is more stretched and open along the sides. And then stretch and open along the spine for our twist. So bring your arms to shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, hands over your shoulders, clasping your elbows. Bring your arms back by your ears and your shoulders, shoulder blades and sitting bones down, and then stretch the base of the skull and crown up. So opening the bones of your spine to twist as you exhale to one side. Take a breath, and as you exhale, pivot over in the twist. Keep the weight on both feet as evenly as you can. 
Lift the sitting bones maybe a little bit. Keep your arms next to your ears as much as you can. Stretch out through your head. And then inhaling, work up in the twist into that upper body back bend. Remember, no pressure in the lower back when you're twisting. So make sure that that heart lifts and the shoulders drop, the elbows pull back, head away. Arms still next to your ears as you go into that back bend. Inhale upright, exhale around to the center and switch your arms. And again, stretch the spine apart so you can exhale to the other twist. Take a breath, lengthening, and again, pivot in the twist and relax. Deepen as far as you'd like to go. Keep the weight on both feet as much as you can. Toes still pointing to the foot. And again, when you're ready for that release, from the forward position, inhale your way up in the twist into that upper body for your back bend. And again, just maximize the chest lift and the elbows back, shoulders down, and feel that body in a little bit of a back bend while you're twisting. But remember, not in the low back. Inhale upright, exhale around to the center, arms lifting into extended mountain. Keep them next to your ears, pivot the hips slightly back as you bring your body parallel to the floor. Stretch it out, lengthening, and then just drop into ragdoll and hang. So wherever your hands go, just let them be heavy, sinking toward the floor. And then if you'd like the stretch on your back, you can bring your hands behind your legs and pull in a little deeper for that extra stretch on the back of your body. Hands to the front, knees again slightly bent, and we'll do that wind up one more time into mountain pose. Shoulders relaxing down, crown up toward the ceiling. Take a moment to breathe and feel your body. And then take your hands along your side and just slide them up, backs of the hands along the sides. As you get to your head, turn the palms inward, extend the hands up toward the ceiling, turn the palms out, rotate them out and down and back to your sides. And again, bring the hands along your side, turning the palms out and then in, reaching up, palms again out, rotating out to shoulder level and all the way down to your sides. One more time, stretching through the sides as you bring those arms all the way up, turning the hands out, rotating and releasing into mountain pose. And then circle the shoulders a couple of times around and then release and circle back the other way. And then releasing your arms, bring your chin down into your little throat center indentation at the base of your throat. And we'll rotate the head around. So bring your chin over to the shoulder and then look up, lifting the chin toward the ceiling. Roll to the back, lifting the chin to the center and then rolling over toward the other side. Chin down to your shoulder, rolling along your heart and to the center. Circling around one more time, over the shoulder, up toward the ceiling, into the middle, over to the side, down to your shoulder, rolling to the middle. Keep both shoulders down throughout the roll one more time. Just feel that neck getting a little bit more rolled and released as you go through that whole range of circle. And this time as you stop in the center, just relax, make sure those shoulders are releasing down still and reverse your circle over to the side, up to the ceiling, to the middle, to the other side, down to your shoulder and roll into the center. Shoulders are back and down, shoulder blades toward your waist as you again roll in that circle all the way around, feeling your neck doing its thing, letting it just get a good release and stretch. 
And one more circle to that same side. Shoulders are relaxed. Crown is reaching away. And that circle is completing back to the center. And then tip your head upright. Just take a moment feeling that whole neck area, maybe a little more energized. And breathe. Bring your arms up to shoulder level. Bend the elbows, fingertips together in front of your chest, and elbows right at shoulder level. Spread your toes, everything mountain pose, core still activated. Pull your elbows back and separate your hands, and then fingertips back together. Separate your hands to the front, out to the sides, and pull them toward the back as far as they want to go, not too far if that works, not doesn't work, or as far as you like if you love it. And then rotate the arms back, fingertips together. So first pulling the elbows back, just separating a little, and then together, and then really reaching out and all the way around as far as you want to go. And back together. And again, elbows stay at shoulder level the whole time as you do that one more time, separating, and then swinging around. And back to the center. And release, mountain pose. Feel your shoulders, neck area a little more activated. Shoulders circling again, just to give them a little release. Crown toward the ceiling, and we're going to work the sides of the shoulders a little bit more. So keeping one hand down, bring the other arm out. Palm toward the ceiling, hand above your shoulder. Bring that hand to the outside of your head. And then keeping the face facing the front, just pull that head just slightly over to the side as you push your head slightly into your hand. And just notice that activates that shoulder neck area a little bit more. Push the other hand down for a little extra if you want to, or heel of the palm down. And again, just maximize or minimize. It's your body. Do what's right for your body. Exhaling, releasing any tension, just letting it stretch gently. Hand releasing, bring that other hand back up, tip your head upright, bring the arm out, palm to the floor, back to your side. Take a moment feeling what's different with the two sides of your body, and we'll do the other side. Arm out, palm toward the ceiling, hand above your shoulder. Bring the hand down to the outside of your head and just pull it across as you push the head gently into your hand, feeling that shoulder neck area stretch. Other hand goes down if you want a little bit more or flexed or even more. And again, relaxing as much as you can as you go through that process. Take a breath, exhaling any tension. Just letting it stretch. And releasing the hand, bring the other hand back up, head upright, arm out, palm toward the floor, back down to your side. And again, let's roll the shoulders back and down just a little. And bring your arms out, put the thumbs inside, your fists, your palms, fists gently around them. Turn one up and one down. Keep stretching out through the fists, up through the crown, down with the sitting bones, shoulder blades too, and then rotate the palm or the fists one up and down. So one goes up, the other one goes down as you keep reaching out. Keep the arms at shoulder level as much as you can as you rotate and feel those fists moving. Bring that lower arm with it all the way up to the elbow. And then all the way up to the shoulder, the whole arm rotating. And then let's bring the shoulders into it. So pull the shoulder forward as the fist goes down, and then releasing it. And just get those shoulders working till you feel that twist going all the way through the shoulders into the middle of the back. Nice massage across that upper trapezius, upper back area, and through the whole shoulders. Keep pushing out through the fists up with your head, just letting that whole shoulder area work and rotate and then release it. Just the arms moving. 
And then just the lower arms and fists moving. And finally, just the fists, one up and one down. And then bring both of them down and push out through the fists. Keep tightening, tightening, tightening through those fists, relaxing through the shoulders, oh, as much as you can. And then releasing petals, slowly releasing from your fist, being fist buds, letting those finger petals release out like that National Geographic slow motion sequence, blooming your hand flowers. Spread the fingers as they get out, turn the palms out, pushing out through the palms, up with the fingers, arms as much at shoulder level as you can. And then shake it all out. And again, circle those shoulders both ways a few times. And back into mountain pose. Crown to the ceiling, toes spreading out. Take a moment and breathe. Feel that whole shoulder area. And then turn your toes out a little bit. Bend your knees toward, not behind your toes. Hands above your knees, position don't support. And stretch your spine apart, we'll do a little twist. So again, stretch the hips back, sitting bones back and the crown opposite. And then exhale, turn toward the side as you bring your shoulder across and down toward the knee, pushing the hip back. So your whole body turns to the side as you do that, looking, not just turning your neck, but turning your whole spine. Feel that whole spine lengthening. Do a little deeper if that works. Not a lot of pressure in your hands. And then stretching it out, coming back to the center. Keep the spine straight and long and open, stretching sitting bones and crown away as you exhale. Hips coming slightly up on the side you're turning toward as that shoulder comes across toward the opposite knee. And again, your whole body, hips, ribs, shoulders, and head turning, not just your neck. So lengthening, exhaling, and deepening. And again, lengthening, exhaling, turn back to the center, spine straight, and then round it, sitting bones slightly down, and all back, and bring your shoulders back and down into mountain pose. A little more for the hips. Let's do our pelvic tilt. So same thing, toes turn slightly up, so your whole leg, remember, turns so the knee and toes are still going the same direction. Bending knees, hands above your knees, so you're positioning, not supporting, and keeping that spine nice and stretched apart, and then going into the back bend. So sitting bones go way back and up as the ribs drop and the chest goes forward and slightly up toward the ceiling. Exhale, tuck the sitting bones down and forward so that whole pelvis is moving, ribs going in, core contracting as you round forward and look down. And just breathe with it, inhaling into the back bend, hips way sinking out and tucking back under as you look down. And just a few times through that, feeling the hips working a little more, spine working into its backward bend and forward bend. And the next time you're looking down, just pause and inhale back up into mountain pose. Take a moment to breathe as you get back into your standing position, sinking evenly into your feet up through the crown. Lift your toes, spread them out on your favorite balance foot and get ready for our balance practice. So lifting your arch, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder lined up, core active, so support that spine, ribs in and up, shoulders back and down, sitting bones toward the floor, crown toward the ceiling. Spread the toes, no gripping. If you grip, that loosens the base of the toe, area, ball of the foot, and you have less support. Up with the other leg, and remember, don't cross it over, so roll the top of the thigh in. Pull it toward your heart as far as it wants to go, or keep it close to the floor. And when you're stable, of course, circle your ankle because we want to make sure we stay flexible. And then as you breathe, flex and point to put your foot back down. Shift to the other side. So 
Take what worked, use it, improve whatever you need to. Ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, core activated, shoulders back and down, crown to the ceiling, sitting bones down, everything supported through that ball of the foot area, base of the toes, spread the toes themselves out, no gripping, and lift the arch. Keep the whole body aligned, and the other side too, as you bring the foot up off the floor. Just a little or more, wherever you want to go. You can hold it in, pull it towards your heart, or leave it wherever it chooses to be. And again, circle your ankle whenever you're ready, making sure that that stays nice and loose and flexible. And when you're ready, flex and point to put the foot back correctly on the floor. Now, pose one more time. Take a breath. Dress and tension out. Hands to your heart. Look at them as you inhale toward the ceiling. Thumbs back and chest high as you come into that back bend. At swan dive, separate your hands out to shoulder level, palms toward the floor, pivot at your hips, bring your body parallel to the floor. Stretch it out, everything straight, and drop into that dog. Take a moment and breathe. Slide your hands up under your knees, on your shins. Palms just gently pressing, elbows, knees, and spine straight. Take a breath and lengthen everything. Exhale down and bend your knees, coming all the way to the floor. Hips back on your heels, hands, palms up, and forehead to the neck. Shoulders relaxing, and just take a moment in child's pose transition just to adjust and release anything. Stretch your spine, sink your hips back, let your shoulders relax, and don't forget to breathe. And then inhaling, sit up and slide off into step position. Press out through your heels, pulling your toes back. Get those sitting bones slightly behind you. Shoulders relaxing down and crown toward the ceiling. Keep your core activated for support on your spine as you come into staff position. And just a little work for our hips as we're there. So bring your right foot to your left thigh as high as it wants to go and just let that knee go toward the floor. You can add weight with your hand or arm but don't press, just let it release whatever's going on in that tension in your hip. If that's tight, remember you can bring the leg over to the side for a little bit more opening, or you can always lift the sitting bones with a little pad behind you, that helps too. And just let the knee come toward the floor as far as it wants and when it wants to, no forcing. When you force, remember that tightens the muscles, and you want to release them. So just relax and release as much as it wants to. It'll go down only as far as your body is ready to go. That's okay, do what's right for you. And then bring your foot and knee into your hands or wrap your arms around the pull the leg in and work the rotator outside of the hip. So just let it go gently side to side Feel what's going on. There should be fluid in that hip joint getting warmed up. So it should be getting easier as you move. If that's working for you and you love it and you want more intensity, you can bring your leg higher or closer and that will make it more intense through that hip joint. But don't do that if it's already enough in the first position. Keep your spine straight, keep your core active, keep the crown reaching up, keep the shoulders coming down, all the same usual things. And when you're ready to release, just come back into staff position and take that moment to notice the difference on the two sides. So of course, yeah, we have to balance the body and do the opposite side. Foot coming up to your thigh, knee coming down toward the floor. Again, weight of your hands if you want to, or arm, but don't push it, don't force it, don't do anything that makes it tense or tighten. And again, bring the leg over if this is your tight side or not, just whatever is right for your body today. 
And again, just breathe and relax. The more you relax, the more that knee will come down when it's ready. But don't force it. If it's not right for your body, you never need to do that. That's okay. And again, just breathe and relax as you let that hip joint start releasing whatever was holding it too tense and tight. Just notice how your body adjusts as things release and feel that knee maybe getting closer to the floor. And when you're ready, again, knee and foot in your hands or wrapping around, moving it back and forth, getting that hip joint releasing even more. Take a breath, relaxing, stretch the spine up and the shoulders down, keep the core active, maximize or minimize. Remember, it's your body. Choose what's right for your hip joint and what you are choosing for your body to do today. Don't go too far. We don't want to ever overwork anything in the hips or anywhere. And then release, bringing your foot back out to staff position. Again, noticing things may be a little bit more evened up as we did that. Bottoms of your feet together, pulling in into butterfly, holding onto your toes, pulling those heels wherever they want to come, letting those knees drop out toward the sides as they're ready to do so. So they may come that far up near your shoulders still, or they may come down all the way to the mat if you're really released through that inner thigh area. Lengthen up through the spine, keep the core supporting your spine, and bring the hands under your shoulders behind you to the floor. So fingertips down or palms down, whatever works for you. And then just a little pressure into the hands. And as you do that, you may feel those feet rotate a little more open and the knees go maybe a little further toward the floor if that's what they want to do. But remember, never force, just allow it to happen. And in your multitasking watching TV time, you can do this a lot longer. It helps to release things more. But for now, release your hands. Lift your knees, bring your legs out and to the end of the mat. And it's time to use your core for support to roll all the way to the floor. As you come down to the mat, just shoulders down. Bring your arms up to T position. Palms up or down for our twist, just a gentle bent knee twist today. Sitting bones toward your heels, back pressing down. Draw your heels up next to your sitting bones, knees toward the ceiling. Press the back gently down as you lift your feet up off the floor, so knees right above your hips. You can keep the knees there, or you can cross the leg over if you want a little extra low back twist, and a roll over toward that side you crossed your knee toward if you cross the knees, otherwise either side. Head turning toward the opposite side, shoulders down, middle back twist, head turning, neck area twist, and knees coming toward the floor as much as they want, lower back twist, your body, your choice. Take a breath, just relax, let everything go. Of course, you hold your twists also longer when you practice on your own. But for now, we just need to bring those heels toward your hips and roll onto the back. If you cross your legs, uncross. You can bring your feet to the floor and straighten things out. And then knees above your hips, cross the leg the other way if you have the knee crossing for your twist on this side. Head turning toward the opposite side as you bring the knee over and across and down toward the floor on this side. And again, deepen as much or as little as your body wants in this twist. Shoulders down, middle back twist. Let that maximize whatever your spine is willing to do. Remember, exhaling releases and allows your body to go even further when it's ready. But never force a twist. Always just do what's right for you. Shoulders relaxed, head turning, neck area twist, only if that's right for your neck. And knees coming down toward the floor for your lower back twist. Take a breath or two, again, just relaxing as much as your body needs. 
And when you're ready to release those heels, go towards your hips and uncross if you are crossed, bringing the feet to the floor, straightening things out as you slide those feet down to the end of the mat. Toes together, hands near your sides, turn them palms up and separate your toes. Let your body just relax into corpse position for our final relaxation. Deep breath in. Exhale, just let your body sink. And just as your body sinks into that earth support, just let your body go completely. Move your head, letting that chin, jaw, neck, and shoulder area release. Soften your hips, let your whole torso sink, and your legs just relaxing completely. Body sinking deep into that earth embrace. And let earth support you as you let your body go. And allow your mind to release thoughts of your body, allowing any other thoughts coming to you to release as well. Remember always, it's the job of your mind to produce thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. Let the thoughts drift away as easily as your breath, unaware, unnoticed without attention. As you breathe deeper, just let your body sink further, your mind float freer, and your awareness release both your body and your mind. Let it turn inward, focusing only on that peace deep within. Feel your body, feel your mind, feel your awareness only with peace. As always, keep relaxing as long as you have the chance to stay. And if it's time, when it's time to return, getting ready for the rest of your day, just be enjoying energy and awareness with your breath, back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And as you breathe more fully, just begin moving your body gently, however feels good for you today. Moving your arms and shoulders, and arms, legs, and feet. When you're ready for that final yoga hug of appreciation, as you breathe more deeply and stretch more completely, move your sitting bones toward your heels, heels toward your hips, and knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around. Give yourself that appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, head and feet on the floor, roll over to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.